Hey folks, and this is going to be a video for lab number 10. Uh, this week in lab, we are talking about exceptions, and this is making your program more robust and identifying anything that can go wrong in your program and handling that rather than letting the program just crash. So today for my example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a little program that reads in some information from the end user. And generally, anytime that you're dealing with users typing in information, whether it be into a GUI or directly into a... Uh, a console application like this, you always have to assume that the user is going to give you bad information. So you're going to want to definitely deal with exception handling here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the user for their name and for their age and then possibly for a phone number. And then we're going to validate that all of that makes sense. So we're going to have a separate method for each one. So I'm going to say public string get name. Um, and that's going to ask the user for their name. So we're going to system.out.println what is your name? All right, and so we know that anytime that we're going to read something in, we're going to say scanner, my scan equals new scanner, and we're going to pass it system.in, and then we're going to say my scan.next line, and that's going to get me back a line, and I'm going to store that into a string called name. Now, normally what you would do at this point is you would just say return name. But we're going to be a little bit smarter than all of that this time around. First off, we're going to include scanner um, because that needs to be imported up here. OK. Import java.util.scanner. And all right. So if I were to run this right now, I would be able to call um, get name from main. And it should pretty much work. This will have to be declared static because I'm calling it from a static method. Um, I'm just going to comment out the hello world. But in theory, if I run that right now, it should ask me to enter in a name, and it should return back a name. Um, it would be helpful probably if I stored that name in, down here and maybe printed it back out again. Hello plus name. Great. So what is your name? I'm going to type in Enda and program ended. All right, so let's go ahead and run it again now that I've added in that print statement. And we know that it's just going to say hello, Enda. Nothing very exciting there. But the problem is I could type in anything and it will accept it. And that really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So for example, we know that there are certain things about names that have to be true. Generally, names have at least more than one character. So for example, one way that I could mess with the program is I could just simply hit enter. And it says, hello, carriage return. That's not really great. Um, I could run the program and I could type in numbers. I could type in all kinds of crazy things that don't make a whole lot of sense in there. Unless you're Elon Musk's child, in which case they can have exclamation marks in their name or something. But anyway, ignoring that, most people do not have um, crazy things in their name. So what would be nice is if this program identified bad things and went ahead and told the user about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare a new class, which I'm going to call bad name. Um, and I'm going to make it an extension of exception. So class bad name extends exception. All right. And I'm going to give it a constructor. So public bad name. And it's going to have nothing in there. And then I'm going to make another constructor um, public bad name that takes in a string, which we're going to call message, and it simply calls super on message. So this is generally how you're going to define a new exception. You're basically going to have a constructor that takes in a string, and you're going to call super message, which has the effect of passing the message up to your parent, which in this case is exception, and exception knows how to handle that. But now I have the ability to throw something called a bad name. So down here after I read in the name, I can do some if statements. I can say if name.length is less than one, then throw new bad name too short. All right, now once I try to throw an exception in Java, I have to declare that this method could potentially throw bad name. So I add throws bad name to the end of the, the method header in order to declare that this method sometimes throws bad name. It's not always going to throw it, but it could potentially throw it. Once I do that, in order to actually call it, I now have to wrap this whole thing in a try block. 
So I'm going to say try, and then I'm going to move uh, these two lines up into the try block. And there we go. Uh, we're going to just line that back up again. All right. And I'm going to add in a catch block down here where I'm going to catch bad name. We'll call it BN. And I'm going to print out that is not a valid name because it's, and then I'm going to plus BN dot get message. So I'm going to get back the message that I received up there. Now, the message that I received in this case is going to be too short. All right, so let's run this again. All right, and so when I get prompted for a name, actually it's dot length and that's, that's a method, it's not a uh, property in Java. So uh, when I call that, um, this is not, I forgot a semicolon down here as well. Um, when I run this program, it asks me for a name, and I'm going to just hit enter for the first time through, and we're going to see what happens. The last time I just said hello, but now it says that's not a valid name because it's too short. And the too short is coming from this message right here. All right, so maybe I want to have other rules. So for example, else if um, name.length is greater than 100, oh, that's probably not right either. Throw new bad name too long. All right, and so that's another exception that can be thrown. All right, I could also say else if the name dot contains, and I could look for each of the individual things that shouldn't be in there. Now, this is not the most efficient way to do that, but throw new bad name Uh, I'm going to make that just read in English because it says this is not a valid name because it's got an invalid character. All right. Um, and so on and so forth. Now, I said that that's not the most efficient way to do this because you'd have to do a separate else if statement for each. So we're going to try end exclamation and it says no, that's not valid because of the exclamation. You'd have to do a separate one for each one of the individual characters that are not permitted in there and there's a lot um, so very specifically there's you know everything that's on the above the numbers and there's also the commas and parentheses and angle brackets and slashes and backslashes and back quotes but then there's all the unprintable characters that you can get as well which are like you know when you sometimes see a question mark in text in a in a box that's because it's an unprintable character so the right way to do that would actually be to use something called a regular expression um, which is beyond the scope of what we're doing this week, but you would generally use a regular expression to say, if the name is anything other than A through Z, uppercase or lowercase, then throw an exception with an invalid character. And that would be a much more efficient way of doing this. But again, the point is you can absolutely do this. So this is now a beginnings of a robust get a name method. It's checking all the various different things that could go wrong. Um, so likewise, we're going to go ahead and do a get an age method. So we're going to say public int get age and that's going to throws bad age um, all right and so then in here we don't have a definition for bad age i'm going to go make that in a moment but basically we're going to system.out.println ask them to enter in an age and then we are going to again read in the age so we're going to scanner my scan equals new scanner system.in and then we're going to say int age is equal to my scan dot next int all right now that's going to be interesting all by itself because that could fail immediately because it's absolutely possible that they give me an x when they're supposed to be entering an int so we would immediately want to put all of this into a try block because you're not sure what you're going to get from all of this so I'm going to grab these and just move them up, aside, up here inside of that try block. So there's actually two different levels of errors that can happen here. We could have parse errors that are happening in this. And so I'm going to catch um, exception. And what I'm going to do here is if you give me something that's not right, then I'm going to throw new bad age. And in new bad age, I'm going to say not a number. All right, 
Okay, and again, I can't actually do that yet because I haven't defined bad age over there. All right, so the other things that could go wrong, if the age is less than zero, now I should probably throw a new bad age too low. And um, if the age is greater than 150, that's uh, probably going to be too high. And there you have it. Um, in all other circumstances, we're going to return the age. So if we get through all of this and none of that happened, then boom, we have an actual age and life is good. Uh, one problem I've created there is by putting all this in a try block, I need to define the age before I go into the try block so that it's available after the try block, because otherwise it's only local inside of there. Um, so that should fix that. Um, so the only thing that I need to do now is I need to create a bad age, and that's going to be a new file and it's going to be class bad age extends exception and again we're going to have public bad age um, which is going to have nothing in it and public bad age which takes in a string message and calls super with that message so that's the standard definition for all of that all right so let's go back and hit run on this guy and see where we are um, i never actually called get age so let's uh let's do that down here in my main um so we try um and then we're going to say int age equals get age and um yeah so that could throw a different thing so now i'm going to catch that catch bad age ba and All right, and I need the semicolon at the end of all that. Okay, let's try running this again. So you can see that I have two different catch lines here, and that's because I'm catching the exceptions that are coming from um, that method cannot be referenced in a static context, and that's because I didn't say static here. When I'm calling a static method, when I'm calling a method from inside of a static reference, it has to be static as well. All right, so enter your name. So I gave it enda, and that's acceptable enter in an age and I'm going to say negative two and it says that's not an age because um, did I ever print out the uh, I didn't so plus ba dot get message all right let's run that one more time just to prove that that works and so it is enda and then an age is negative two it says that's not a number okay now that's probably weird. Um, why did I get not a number on that? Because that actually is a number. I would have expected that to give me too low. Um, scanner my scan age gets next int. Is negative two not considered an int? I would think it is. Huh. Okay, I see what's going on here. Um, so the problem that I made, or the mistake that I made, is I put these throws inside of a try and because they're inside of a try this try is actually going to be the one that catches them which is then always going to send not a number and i found that by just testing again i entered in an age that was too high i put in 150 or 180 and what happened there is it tried to throw bad age too high but that was then caught by exception and so as a result it ended up throwing not a number so these should not have been inside of that um, try catch so I'm just going to cut those out of there, and down below, I'm going to paste them back in again. So just be careful about where you put stuff. Um, in this case, that was putting a throw inside of another catch is not really what you generally want to be doing. Um, okay, that looks more reasonable. So let's run that one more time here, and let's do uh, 180 is the age. And that does say too high. And then I'm going to try, try it again. And this time I'm going to put an X as the age. And that says not a number. So it looks like that's a lot more robust now. And I'm able to catch all of the different things that could go wrong. And the program's not crashing. It's just catching the things that are going wrong and then doing something intelligent with them. So again, in this video, the things that we covered were the idea of creating a custom exception 
which is done by extending exception and adding in a constructor that takes in a string and calling the super on it. And I had a bad age and a bad name exception. Those were both custom. You also saw me throw some exceptions in here. And if you're going to do that, the method has to be declared as throws and the exception kind. So public static string get name throws bad, ex bad name. And then inside of that, I simply use throw new to throw a new exception for whatever type I wanted to throw. And then you saw me use a try catch block, um, which is going on right here. And that's generally how you're going to catch. So hopefully all that makes sense for you this week. And uh, you guys are going to have some fun writing some exceptions. And I will see you guys next week.